let's get nice, you. loud, and clear. Let's get your levels right. Yo. Nice, loud, and clear. Yeah, that works. Yo, um, welcome to another episode of Spirits of the Streets podcast. Today in the building, Showtime, Seth Wheeler. Hello. How you doing today, bro? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. Thank you for uh, sitting down, chopping it up. You know, we're kind of getting this in the moment. We were like, are we going to shoot? Maybe we should plan for this. Maybe we should. We had, we had, we did have a plan, though, already. Uh, fact. The plan was just to create the content. Yeah, we're just doing this because I'm here. That's a fact because every blue moon you show up and it's just hard to get you around sometimes, but it's nice for you to pull up and just, you know, get it in. I feel you. I love it. I love it. I love it. So um, we, we've had a couple interviews already. A lot of technical difficulties on my end. Um, but as I grow and the podcast grew and turned into this, I'm glad to have you on here. And this is going to be really the one that I, you know, this is going to really, uh, I feel like I want to talk about some things while the time we got. But yeah, to really get to, you know, know you a little better. Yeah. Feel me? So for the people that don't know who you are and what you do, can you explain to them a little bit about your story? I'm just a kid from Arizona City, raised in Eloy, raised in Tall Tech, raised in Casa Grande. Small town vibes. Small town vibes. And I fight MMA. Okay. I'm an MMA fighter and fucking make music and for the trainer. fun. And trainer. And a trainer, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, so so lately you've been going crazy with the training. You've been chilling with the training because I know you do have a bit of some back problems going on. Yeah. But what's like no, training yeah. been like for you lately? Lately is not. It's been like third gear, mm. third, fourth gear out of 10. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, you have to take it slow. Yeah, I got to. You got to take care of yourself. Yeah. Your body. My Yeah, my back's fucked up. So I'm like, if it's not one thing, it's another thing with my back. Now, like, do you think that's from just uh, constantly training, or um, is that something that just naturally would happen to you, or is it because of what you do that's causing this? I don't even know. <laughs> I just know that I go to physical therapy and he fucking gets me right, my physical therapist. But what are the what are the I, like things on my that they end? Do? Well, on my end, I know I could be eating better. Mm, we all can. You yes, know, I feel that. I feel so that. I feel like I've been getting really tired of it, mm. like my back. So I've just been doing my best to eat tired better. Of dealing with the pain. Yeah, mm. and it, like my back just feels inflamed. So I'm just trying to fucking cut out all the bad shit. I can do better, but it's, I'm slowly. So for people out there, like, cause you around. know, you know, right? You know what you need to do for yourself to get you where you need to be, where you want to be, really. Yeah. For those people out there that don't know, like, what are some things that you recommend they do if they want really, you know, trying to get on a healthier path? Like, what is what is some steps? The, Pull the trigger. That's the first one. Just do it. A healthy step would be realization about what's going to happen in the future. Mm. You know what I mean? The mindset. Because if you think about it right now, think about how much sugar you've eaten your whole life. Up Just to, think about to it. this point. Yeah. Think uh, about like a mountain of sugar uh, and how big that mountain would be. How big, wow. How big would your mountain be? Exactly. That would That's be an, the kind that of thing I think about. That would be an interesting art piece. Yeah. Like that's a, just a big ass thing of sugar. No, well, I would imagine like people standing next to these piles, and everybody's yeah. like s- scaling. Like, yeah. what's your pile yeah. size? Right. Crazy. So that's then true. you anyway, then you got to think yeah. about. So let's just use that in as as an example, because hmm. you could do it with other things. But so you could come to realize how much sugar you eat. Yeah. And you're like, I wonder how much sugar I've eaten so far. Yeah. Now that implies. I'm going to eat more sugar. So how much more sugar am I going to eat? You know what I mean? So it's like all those variables, the 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 present variable and the past variable are non-controllable cuz that's what it is and that's what it was. Yeah, exactly. But all the future variables and and continuous eating of the sugars, mm. that's a controlled variable where I could control that. That's a fact. You know? That's a fact. I think a lot of shit like that where if you stop stretching, your body's going to get tighter. If you continuously stretch, your body's going to get looser. Mm-hmm. So you got to think about shit. So it's like a consistent thing. Like you got to think of 
the negative shit that's gonna happen if you keep doing a certain thing. Right. Or the, the or the po- yeah, the long term. Mm-hmm. Or the positive things that are, you know. Yeah, yeah. You keep eating sugar, you're gonna get diabetes. You stop eating sugar, you're gonna feel better. Right, hundred percent. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. So and you can look at that like through anything. Like it's just exactly and you know, in myself for my you know, what I related to is like addiction. Because you know, I've had my problems. A lot of our close friends have had their problems. You know, it's just uh, everyone's addicted to something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then when I when I think that like I just had to stop doing certain things, I just had to. Yeah. Because if it, it was literally matter of life and death. Yeah. Literally. Mm-hmm. You know. So so. Health is wealth. Health is definitely wealth. And you'll you'll realize that, and that's what I've been realizing when my body starts hurting, mm. and I'm like, this ain't even like I don't care about anything mm. else because my body hurts. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like fuck mm. training, fuck doing anything. If my fucking body hurts, I'm not even happy. Mm. So that's like really health. Your temple health is wealth. Yeah, yeah. yeah, health is wealth. I agree with so, you. I agree. So that's the first step, you guys. You know, just cut the sugar. That's one thing we can definitely cut, talk about. So and, and let's use, active, let's right? use cut the sugar. It's not necessarily cut the sugar. Yes, cut the sugar. But what I'm trying to say is think about the future of number one of what you're doing. Think about the future. Yeah. It's a mindset. Thing. Yeah. The future of your actions. Mm. Let's put it that way. Think it's about the future of your actions. Everything is cause and effect. Yes. Because everything. What you, what you get in the gym a lot. Because what I said. And so like another like advice for me would be. Because I was talking to my friend about this, my teammate. He's in the UFC. Fire. And I'm telling him, I'm like, yo, like, it's it's weird how people are. So, like, <laughs> this kid, he was in the gym, and he goes, he saw, he saw, he, you could tell he's a Sean O'Malley fan, Sugar Sean O'Malley. I'm a Sugar Sean O'Malley that, fan, too. He's a fighter, right? Don't get it twisted. He's a fighter? Yeah. UFC fighter? Yes. Okay. What is he specialized in, like? Striking. Jiu-jitsu? Striking. Okay. Fire. Nasty striker. Fire. Right? Fire. So, okay, you guys were talking about him and how you, you both like him. Yeah. Well, no. I'm, on, I'm like, over here, like, getting my shit ready in my bag. He's kind of down down on the other side of the ring, and he's talking to Kevin, my my friend that's in the UFC. And uh, he's, like, he's saying, they're all talking. I'm not really listening, but then I hear, like, you showing him yada, yada, yada. And he's, like, I look over, and I can see him, like, yeah, like, hyping him up, kind of. Yeah, like, hyped up. And I was, like... I was like, yeah, he's good, but he needs to he needs to get his ground game right, which he has been because he's been training with Taquino, who's literally the number one guy in the world in the 135, 145 pound division. Yo, hey, yo, come on, come on in. I'm sorry, I'm shooting a podcast, but come on in. My fault, my fault. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yo, number one rule: phones silent. Yeah. Sorry. Not your. But good. you, so you. He was hyping him up. You didn't like so the I, fact that he was hyping him no, up. No, no, no. What was the? Honestly, I don't even know why I even said anything. To be honest. But what did you say? I was just like, he don't really, he need, he don't really got oh, the he, best ground game. He needs to work on his ground game. Work on your ground game. So he goes, he says something like, he says something like, yeah, but he'll kick your head off before he takes you down. <laughs> I'm like. I know you as a fighter. I know you're not talking about me, bro. You as a fighter, take it personally. We're training. You're sitting in on the ring. You don't. You don't even take a class. I went to. So I went to uh, the facility one time. Yeah. Arizona Combat. Yeah. The it's a dope place. Yeah. You walk in. You got all the belts and the 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 uh, medals. medals and trophies and shit and mm-hmm. all the pictures. And then you go into the back. It's all training. Yeah. We shot. Uh, you were preparing for a fight or something. We did a vlog. Or I did something for you, a little quick something. Yeah. But so so this guy sitting on the side and made you feel the type of way. What in that moment? No, what not were no you type thinking? of way. They're just look, when someone's talking about MMA, yeah. I start listening. Okay. Cause I l I've been watching MMA since I was fucking eight years old. You 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 are a professional MMA fighter. Yes. Yes, I agree. Mm-hmm. Been, I'm a I'm a but I'm a mixed martial artist. Okay. That's the so, like, so fuck fighting. I'm a mixed martial artist. I know how is, to fight. That is your ultimate. Like if you were gonna title yourself something, yeah, I'm a mixed martial artist. Mixed I'm a fucking martial. ninja. <laughs> I know how to fight. Exactly. Fuck. I know how to coach too. Th- I know that's how to, amazing. I know that's- how to teach you how to fight. So the thing that bugs me is when I get when we hear guys talking about MMA and then talking about like they know some shit about what they're talking about. Because mm-hmm. he's like, I do, I do kick your fucking head off before you could before you take him down. And I'm like, bro, first off, I ain't said I was taking him down. Yeah, yeah. 
Don't don't come at me saying he gonna kick my head off. <laughs> Cause you're literally an insta kid, and, and then there's a lot of guys like this who they come they come into the gym, they go and hit the bag. They don't take a class. They're not doing six o'clock class. They're not doing jujitsu class. Like so you're they literally just, there floating around, talking about oh this guy needs to do this better or this guy needs to do this. Like you're not even training, brother. Like you're not even training, and that irks you, huh? They go stand in front of the mirror and they fucking shadow box and do spinning shit. Hey, full shadow box. And I'm right like, what now, the fool. fuck are you doing? Like, don't ever talk about anything about yeah. fighting. And I hate it. Like, journal. Some journalists are that's, like this too. That's crazy but, because I agree with you. Yes, but you don't do so, it. I, I I have a soft spot for journalists because they're journalists. There's lately, if you go watch the last. The Kamar Usman, Kobe Covington press conference. Uh huh. There was some unprofessional journalism going on, and that's the only thing I don't like. Is when like what the journalists are antagonizing, exactly? they're antagonizing oh, the fighters, trying to trying to you know build a narrative of some sort. Yeah, but okay. they're also like the dude goes up and he's like, if if Usman knocks you out, will you put out the X rays of your last fight? And it's like. What, that what the fuck does that got to do with it? Like, this fool will it fuck sells, you up, bro. It sells. Yes and no, because it's like, it let the sells. fighters do that. Yeah, but you got to understand. But it does, though, because he did come back with a hard ass, like, shut the fuck up. And that moment but, there. But so anyway. Yeah, okay. There's guys. Who talk the who, talk. Who talk the talk, but they don't walk, know what it actually walk. takes. And that's what you're asking me, right? Yes. It's like, what, what are some advice to yes. get to where you are, right? Yes. That's what you asked. You got to fucking train. You got to know it. You got to do it. You got to fucking train, bro. Like, don't fucking sit here and talk about yada, yada, anything. About, anything. About any kind you're of not, fighting, but not train at all. You're not great at what you're doing because you haven't mastered it. 10,000 exactly. hours plus. Exactly. 10,000, 100,000 hours plus. Exactly. I have, mat, I have more mat time than a lot of people. And that's a fact. And I, I, people can tell. People can tell. Like, a lot of people don't want to like say this, it all the is, time. They don't want it in the spread. It's but a little irrelevant. Showtime. But I have more mat time than the current UFC heavyweight champion. It, He's only it, been fighting for five years or something like that. Literally. You know what I mean? Literally. I love but, that. I love that. And I'm not comparing myself to Nagano. I'm just that's a fact. That's a fact. So <sighs> when it, so when it comes to doing this shit, you really are dedicated to this, you know? Yeah. I'll and we've, we've talked about, you know, the story of, like, how you got into fighting, you know? You know, we talked about it. They don't know. Maybe they watched the other episode, but, like, growing up just fighting with kids all the time. Yeah. Getting picked on and kind of just, you know, different yeah. things. Just always people wanting to fight with you. Yeah. So that drew you to it. And mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken, you... Last time we talked, you said you broke about seven arms or seven bones or like eight bones or something like that. In, around there. Around there. Broken. Yeah. Maybe shattered. Not shattered, but definitely I popped broke. some elbows out of place. Popped elbows, ankles, fingers. Yeah, what? Yeah, a couple, a couple ankles with some couple. heel hooks. <laughs> now, that's a wild feeling I can imagine. You just pop someone's shit and you just... Yeah, Last time we talked about it, you said that it turns into like jello. Like it just kind of like. Oh. Well, there was this one time. Wow. Yeah, it just goes and you feel it all and you're just like, damn. That's fucked. Like you don't, you're not, you don't have to do it. It's not that hard. Well, you don't, yeah. You, you definitely got to put don't. a little like. Eh, it's mm -hmm. gone. I'm like, ooh, okay. <laughs> Shit. And then how long is someone out for when something if like that happens? If it's bad and they need surgery, they're going to be out for That's six to eight months. A year, just about. With their knees, yeah. Fuck. If it's their knees, it's for sure a year. Fuck. That's the risk you got to take, though, huh? Jiu-jitsu fighters? Whenever you... I think in my... So, look, in my opinion, mm -hmm. jiu-jitsu fighters take the biggest risks. Because jiu-jitsu fighting... Why, why, like why being because a of the technique of fighting and no. how they... Yeah, well, it has, it has to do with the technique, right? So, like, if you look at it this way, professional jiu-jitsu versus professional wrestling and i'm talking about so that's two different things but no, sure. i'm not not I'm, yeah but i'm not talking about wwe i'm talking like about wrestling like professional like profession. olympic yeah. style wrestling yeah. mm -hmm. round and grappling and shit yeah wrestlers what do you like, hold on a little side question what do you think about the wwf and all that you love that right you yeah that's just cool okay fun. dope okay yeah, yeah. We all did. We Get all, your money. We grew, we That's just entertaining. Up, we grew up off that We shit. grew up in the golden era. <laughs> I don't know. I can't say nothing about it now. Yeah, yeah. But, but when we, we were growing up. That shit was, it was off the chain. It was marketed. Greatest, greatest thing yeah. I've ever seen. Okay. Back but, uh. Yeah. So if you. So like, so like a wrestler, they're wrestling and mm -hmm. they do wrestling matches and they get paid with sponsors and endorsements and they get paid if they win the tournaments. Mm -hmm. 
But they're not trying to break each other's bones. They're trying to take you down and put each other like the biggest Submissive. things. The biggest things that happen is like someone getting hit in the head and getting cut, mm. head butts, mm. collisions with elbows, mm. knees, hips. But they're looking for that submission. They're looking but for in the jujitsu. I'm trying to fucking break right, your arm. Right. I'm not trying to pin you. I'm not trying to pin you. I'm trying to just get I'm not you trying out to control of the way. You. I'm trying to get into I'm a position of control to break to you, make you go into submission. You know what I mean? Put you into submission. So. So was that the one like so more I'm, point based or like I don't get yeah, that? Yeah, wrestling is point based. Point based, and pin based. Because, because if I pin you, I win. Oh, because that's if like you a tap, submission. It's like tapping. It's like tapping. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm if you're pinning, you basically, you have to tap to lose, right? You at that point, like if you're pinned down, or does the you know referee, the referee fucking like uh, like wrestling? Oh, uh, yeah, wrestling. One, two, three. Yeah, one, two, like three, that. But they won't count to one, two, three. The yeah, moment both your shoulders touch the mat, it's pin. Wow. Okay, so it's quicker. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Ah, fuck. So, but in jujitsu. You gonna break some uh, shit. You're, I'm trying to break your knee. Fuck your knee. Off. I'm trying to take that shit home with me. <laughs> it's a trophy. So, <laughs> jujitsu guys are getting That's paid that mindset. more. I, in my opinion, I honestly don't even know who gets paid more wrestlers or jujitsu guys. But there's guys who fucking do tournaments where they make no money, and they walk out of that tournament with a blown arm, a blown knee. First of all, WWE, WWF. That is more commercial entertainment. Yeah, but so they get they fucking are compensated. Get, they, they are get getting the bag. Yeah. Because it's the best soap opera. Yeah, they're making <laughs> millions of dollars a week. Based, based off of what y'all really like, though. Because these other people are really breaking their bones and really fucking themselves up. And for granted, no money. For, granted for zero money. Yes, exactly. Granted, now the WWE stuff, they, they get hurt sometimes. They're doing some wild acrobatic shit, and they do have to look a certain way. But they got money for physical therapy. They got money for They medics. got a budget. It's like yeah. rap artists. You got a budget. We yeah. got you, but you got to pay. You got to make it back. You got to make it back for us because not. We're gonna, and but then after it, but we still, then, we still much? own your name. We still own you. Now yeah. UFC, like I feel like Dana White, what he's doing over there. I see, and I keep up with kind of with him a little bit because of the fact that Nelk. Shout out Nelk, you feel me? But I watched there and they fuck with him and they go to the show and it just looks crazy because I remember years ago when UFC was just starting, maybe like I'm gonna guess me like twelve. 15 years ago 25 25 years ago Damn I'm 27 now So I was I was I was young But I remember watching The UFC fights It was just like They had the shows Where they did the shows Where people were gonna go Be fighters Professionally yeah, the fighter. They still got that but. Yeah, but it was like I feel like this was just Starting out whenever yeah, I was young yeah, and shit yeah, You know yeah. what I'm saying That was and, and, <laughs> The ultimate fighter Yeah 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 And um it, It's crazy to see Like how big it's grown Yeah Cause it's Hand in hand with WWE. Yeah, it's hand in hand with that entertainment. Literally world. hand in hand, they work but, together. Yeah, WWE. Whoever I think whoever owns WWE or whatever that That's is. That's not Vince McMahon, the McMahon family nah, anymore. I don't know. Maybe, but whoever did that, mm. they have control of UFC too. Part of yeah, they all. Because I think they uh, left Zufa. And got signed with whoever owns WWE. See, I don't even know who Zufa is, so that's cool. That's cool. all right, dope, dope, hell yeah. So for you, um, when it comes to training, you like training, um, working with you know like adults, kids, teenagers. What's like the most cool part of training for you? The most cool part of training? I'm sorry, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question, but like, what is the best part to you when it comes to training, and what just type of person able, do you just like being to able train? to train? Anyone. Just being able to train. You think everyone does, needs to learn some training of some way? I think it'd be good for everybody. Some self-defense. Yeah. Some self-defense. I think it'd be good. It's like, to me, the cool thing about training is like, if you're really into it. Yeah. And like, this is like something you like to do. It really helps with everything that's going on outside of the life. Right. You know? Yeah. It really does help. See, I love, I love growing up, always fighting. You feel me? Yeah. I love, it's just... It, but I don't like to fight. Yeah. I don't like to That's fight. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm really grateful to just train. <laughs> exactly. I'm grateful for that. Like, I'm because grateful to know that I could defend myself in a moment's notice. Right. And listen, because look, it, I don't train. And I don't. And then, you know, I've, you know, have some fights with my brothers, my cousins, you know, people, whatever, growing up. But very recently, I went to California on a train all night. But listen, so check this out. So I don't train, right? <laughs> I go to California, train all night, hop on the bus from Los Angeles to Bakersfield, Bakersfield, get off. It's like... Noon now, you know, I left at midnight the night before. It's now noon. Getting off the bus, um, walking off, getting my bags early. I'm just like, all right, ready to do what I'm here to do work, get it in, podcast. Dude. I stop, I look over, some dudes on live. 
he's on live. I'm like, oh shit, I see a camera. Me, you know, I see a camera. I fucking, <laughs> all of a sudden, I get active. I want to do something. So I go, dude gets up, grabs me, says, don't be fucking throwing gang signs in my. I'm like, what? In that moment, I was just like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. He's quick with it. Got active quick, you know? It's California. I know better. I'm from California. Should know better to do hand signs. But is what it is. So grabs me, boom, boom. He's push him off me. There's a girl between us trying to, like, you know, stop the situation. And he's getting himself angry. I'm just kind of, like, watching. I'm just, like, punches me in the face. Boom. Over the girls. I just see behind her head a fist. Boom, boom. Tries to attack me. Girl jumps between us. I, this girl, I don't know her. I don't know her. <laughs> I don't know her. But she's helping me, right? And this guy's trying to hit me. And he's like, and she's trying to stop. But he's got my hand in his hair. Or he's got my hair in his hand. And he's trying to swing over, you know? So I'm like in the seat because they both came at me, stumbled me over. First one hit me. I just, I, it didn't really do much. It dazed me a little bit, maybe. But I didn't, you know, I didn't knock out. You know what I'm saying? It was more surprised. I was just like, hit. I was just like, but I would start laughing and shit, you know, after we, but I see his face. I just start hitting him because, you know, it's just like, at that moment, it's like fight or flight. You know what right I'm saying? There, like, yeah. like, I was fight or flight. You feel yeah. me? So, you know, I just start hitting him and then he backs up. As he backs up, I start laughing. I'm just laughing. I'm like, bro, you, bro, you tripping. Yeah. I don't, facts. I'm, he gets on his phone again like this. I'm like, yo, I'm hippie Matt, bro. I'm like, Peace, love, positivity. <laughs> That's fucking funny. And so we scrapped it out on the bus real quick, you God know what I'm damn. saying? And it was really for nothing. It was really pointless, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But but it was like, um, in moments like that, I think like maybe I should train. Maybe I should train a little well, more. Well, four like, moments like for, that, You know right? what I'm saying? Like yeah, four and it's like, situations But the that. thing is that like, I don't, it's funny to me. I don't care, yeah. you know, if, it, if it's serious, take my life. And I, yeah. at that point, it's like, what, nothing I could do. Yeah. So a little scuffle was just, but that's just funny as hell. You know, I want to share that with you because I, I said it on a different episode, different podcast, but it was just because this was very recent. That was the last little thing I got into. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's been a minute, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's just things happen so fast. Yeah. So fast. Yeah. And it was no bad blood, you know, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I don't, like, it was pointless. Yeah. That man, I don't know that. He don't, I don't facts he I was mean, having a bad day or he something was, he's at the end of the day he could be a gang member he could be this he could yeah be that. true he really takes it to you know i'm a hippie from but so for for people that want to like hit you up for training what's the best way to get in contact with you through the dm a dm or a email email yeah oh yeah either one yeah tap on instagram in, uh the instagram is going to be in the description below so go follow my guy and uh support him you know what I'm saying? Support everything he does. We, you know, he also does music from time to time. Yeah. That's how we originally kind of, you know, came into play. Yeah. So let me give you all some uh, kind of a little, um, you know, some background story. We've been creating music for over 10 years now. I don't think 10. More or less, though. Like eight. Okay. I was like 16. Okay. You were 16. Yeah. When I met you. I was creating music a little bit before. You know? Yeah. But no class member forever no class millionaires yes, sir forever yes sir it's a brotherhood yes sir we made music we did shows we did a lot of things my guy you know always did the training always did the fighting at first you know i was a bit of a little asshole i was like yo you're gonna either train or you're gonna be making music because we gotta make it and, 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 and you know i don't i know how i can be sometimes yeah but i grew up and you know we grew up and we, we were young right we we're yeah. hungry but so from your experience and like everything we did and like how things and how, from your perspective, how do you feel about everything or how what do you think about no class millionaires? I feel like we're one of the best. We're one of the best people, to, like best groups, best musicians to look at and be like. They're doing something right when it comes to sharing love locally. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Cause we've hosted shows. Facts. We've watched and when we host shows, everybody who performs we're like in the crowd watching. We're watching, we're present. We're showing there. Showing love. Yeah, exactly. We're showing, showing love. love. Like yeah. Doozy has a fucking studio. Mm hmm Doozy does it. Productions. Productions. That's what it transpired. DDI. Into. DDI Studios. Like that's what it. 
you know he has his like evolve. what do you mean we're like we're like we show love like the heart the hardest way the longest way mm-hmm. like he literally helps people you know Fact. he's a, he's mixed hella songs for me hella songs for you hella songs for a lot of local artists out here facts showing a lot of love facts uh in my opinion i feel like we're a good group to look at when it comes to like how do you how do you help the community mm. get bigger mm. and i feel like it's been happening more and more with other artists mm. slowly because at first it was kind of i feel like it was just us that was like the best at like supporting everybody we thought was dope you doing something hey let's do it together yeah exactly you're doing something well we got something Look going on so yeah let's go exactly it's always and been like everybody that. it's we always been everyone a shot and people burn their own bridges. Yeah, I mean, you know how like <laughs> you know how like Joe Rogan talks about like when it comes to comedy or podcasting, he's like, I'm gonna fucking help every comic that I like out. Exactly. That I think is funny, I'm gonna help them no matter what, no matter where they're at in life. Exactly, exactly. No yeah. matter all the podcasts, like we should all be podcasting together. And exactly. That's, that's how we've been looking at it, like with music, like we should all be doing shit together. Like we 100%. even, not even to get into details, but we literally, you put together a thing where you like got every like local artists. From fucking Casa Grande in one spot one time. What show was that? It was a fucking meeting you want you put together. Oh yeah, these people didn't care about me, my vision. I no, remember nobody that. did, bro. <laughs> Everybody. I literally the fuck the funny thing about it is like you know, and then it's funny because some of them like I'm. The not, funny thing about it is that you this, were not wrong. I don't want to put this out there, but like so f- those some of those guys did me wrong. Like even yeah. tried to rob me yeah. one time. Like you know, like some of those yeah. people like and it's, but it's but crazy. listen. I don't. They're losers. Some of them are just yeah. losers. Some yeah. people are just losers in the mind. Yeah. But anyways, I showed love. I always been this way, because growing up, I just it's always been that way for me. Yeah. I always drawn to people. So what I did, I remember that. I, I, everybody pull up to my crib. Yeah, exactly. We're not meeting at no. Nah. nah, we're meeting at where I. I literally we were in a garage. Yeah. Every time, every day, trying to figure out how to get. How do we get the studio? How do we get more weed? Yeah. How do we get? But listen. At, a lot of people weren't fucking with me and I just radiate so much some people can't handle it and that's what it is yeah and I understand that about myself yeah I've always think we've been a step ahead of the game <laughs> cuz like I don't know bro it's just a bigger vision I don't see I haven't seen yet yet an artist make it like that out of Arizona yet yeah, it's hard. People, people, it's hard. Like futuristic was probably the only one. Well, a lot of other ones, but one of the major ones that kind of went, you know, mainstream. And that, and and that was, was like, honestly due to the, the internet. That was because uh, he internet's blew up a on huge YouTube. Tool. Yeah. It's not even just the local shit. It's not just you know. But he was he was rocking in the same shows that we were rocking at. He was rocking at the same clubs we yeah. were at. Like you know what I'm saying? But like you look at somewhere like Atlanta. Mm. And every other artist they, is the next fucking. They have a whole culture. Their their shit is crazy. Well, they show love and do support. Yeah, each other exactly. Like they that. do. The they do show love. They do support each other. They know when this someone's about to be up. They know when someone's next. But the the beautiful thing about them is like the consistency. Yeah, yeah. For been forever. Atlanta's been on the map forever. 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 And they always got heat. They always, yeah, for sure. Some legends out of Atlanta, for, for sure. For real. For sure, for sure. Arizona, it's a, it's a mixed pot. But we could be Atlanta like that. I feel like yes. every everywhere, everybody can everywhere. It's just we the, could all be something like that. The thing is that it's too much of. I feel like I feel like, it's too much of a cowboy state right now. Still, as it grows, the community is gonna grow. Yeah. Everyone. That's what every, I'm saying. I feel like we've helped done. In the sense we, of so, in the sense of, I agree with you because we are uh, with the founders of this scenery. We're yeah. part of that history of yeah. Arizona music, yeah, of Arizona culture, yeah. Because in the next 10, 15, 20 years, it's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger because there's more people coming here, yeah. Because of the things going around, going on around the world, cost of living is going crazy. Arizona's a good place to live, yeah. But in the music scene. We definitely um, we have we have worked with a lot of people. Yeah, we know a lot of people. A lot of people know of us, and um, we have some good relationships that came out of it. Uh, you know, some burn bridges that came out of it. But at the end of the day, like for me, my that's what soul, happens. My soulful mission, you know, 
it's just no class millionaires, no class records. Yeah. It's always that's I hold that on my back forever. Hundred percent. Forever. That's my baby. You know what I'm saying? And there's only a few of us that really just that know what's up with that time and place when we was doing it. Now it you know, grew DDI production, so we focus on the yeah. DDI shit. But in the future, I'm still D- DJ Hippie Matt hosting no class yeah. artist. It's, it's, <laughs> come on, baby. Yeah. You feel me? That I'm, shit. I'm, I'm hosting tapes in the future. Yeah, so that I'm, shit was crazy when we're really active, and we did fucking like ten. See if we if we, we did knew, like we did like ten like if we knew what we if I knew what I know now back then. I feel like I would have been able to communicate to everyone better. Yeah, better. And then get the vision across a little better. Because it's hard to get people um, invested when they see no money coming out of it. Yeah. (laughs) No instant, you know, gratification. Yeah. But, but like, what's music like for you? What has music done for your life? Well, all the all the shows and, and shit that we've done and all the music we've all made together has been, like, some of the best times of my life. The funnest times. Yeah. Fun as fuck. Fun. Like when we did uh, First Friday. Fun. That shit was fire. Fun. Fire. Come on. We yeah, were like, chilling. We had the drums. The live drums. Come on. like Had everybody packed in the alleyway. Come on. With crazy graffiti on the sides. Vendors all around. No, you you tripping. That's Arizona Hip Hop Fest. That was Hip Hop Fest? That was on the First Friday? That was in the First Friday. It was in that area. That Same I, shit. But you can go watch that old performance in uh, on YouTube on the yeah. No Class yeah, yeah, yeah. All that shit is dope. Because I'm that not shit was dope because that shit was like one of the one times where it, was, it felt really genuine. That was a good performance. And really like. That was such a great performance that the DJ was like, can you guys come back tomorrow, tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. and please close the show off again? Yeah. And we did it two nights in a row. Yeah. That was tight as and fuck. And it was the same thing. A full it felt, alleyway. Yeah. It felt so genuine because we uh. just started playing music. And people started like freestyling, com- coming to the crowd, yes. and we're all fucking around. And then we made like a we made a whole like little party out of it, kind of kind of deal, a whole little thing out Yo, of it. And then we started performing. And everybody stayed. And shout out to the whole RTU movement. I know they get a lot of hate. I know. I don't know. hate them. I've just said some stupid I know, shit I know we, when I was younger. We said we've said some things, you know, but all all everything to the side, like. You are a big stamp in Arizona culture. Yeah. Hip hop culture. Yeah. Whether, you know, people have their opinions of you or not. Me, myself, I have my personal experiences with certain people over there. Yeah. And certain things that I just have respect and just, you know, got to respect the game. Yeah. You got to, you know, hate the game, not the player. But don't hate at all. But anyways, um, we did <laughs> we did a freestyle one time at a radio show. I did horrible at the thing. We were at the thing. The guy, the guy. I was, did bad too. The guy. We did. It wasn't our best. It wasn't our best thing. We weren't. We didn't prepare enough. We did not prepare, and I we was. We kind of took it a little. I was probably fucked up on this and that. We took it and, a little not serious. And then so, the dude they wasted our time. It was a waste of time because we didn't come prepared, and it was our fault really. But then didn't, you know. And then <laughs> my guy, at the time, you were very uh, aggressive and came out with a. Uh, it was a freestyle. Do you remember that freestyle? Yeah, I yeah. didn't say nothing about ninety-eight point three in the freestyle. I just put it in the title. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> oh Fuck em. man! So like, you've always been that way in your life. Have you always just been had that little bit of aggression in you? And I feel like I want that's a question. Have you? And has that helped you in fighting? And your endeavors It hasn't helped me in music Not in music Only when I'm feeling A certain way Writing lyrics Like when I'm feeling Like hyped up And really like Amped up And want to write some shit And I hear a beat that I like And I'm like yeah You really and In I the get moment that da, 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 But whatever shit But I'm not ever like I'm not a hater I don't hate on people I don't hate on shit I don't know I don't think you are I don't think you are I think that you're just um, You have your opinion and sometimes like my and, and sometimes my opinion is wrong. Uh, hey. And sometimes I'm in the wrong, but it's Opinions cool. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. Exactly. None <laughs> of it matters, yeah, but we well, all got one. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you just got it. facts are facts. You yeah. can't you can't ever you can't ever argue with. Yeah, that. I just know I was just mad because I'm like, man, I'm dope. 
And that Dope. was like a chance to be on like some like radio shit. And like I was like, I was just mad at that to be honest. I, I was like, this it's, is this is a cool opportunity, but sometimes sometimes we uh, should just be mad at ourselves blowing it. That's what I was. I was mad that it was just like a missed opportunity. Yeah. And I was like, nah. I feel embarrassed, so now I'm gonna put some hot shit out. <laughs> chop, chop. So chop. I don't feel bad no more. Hey, hey, when you, I mean, sometimes when you're in that mode, you just do that. You do that kind of stuff. Yeah. But you know, looking back at it now, would you? You probably wouldn't change it because you know, in that in that moment, is what it yeah. is. Feel me? Express yourself. Because I just literally seen, you know, I see artists always expressing themselves, whether it's good or bad or this or that. Like, just express yourself because that's what we are. We're artists, and you have to communicate yourself communicate your thoughts and ideas or else people aren't going to know. We're not going to know. Yeah. We're not going to know. Yeah. So to any upcoming like fighters or artists or anybody, or maybe even a younger you, any words of inspiration or any words that you would like tell a younger you or someone younger that wants to become a fighter, that wants to do music or that wants to do anything in life. <clears throat> first off, just be, first off, just be consistent because when it comes to fighting, and music those are two things that are gonna snitch you out of hard work yeah you know what i mean you can't be like i've been doing music forever i'm i'm fucking you to say all this you want <laughs> about you being a rapper and shit all right let's go make a song then let's see how good you are and then that song trash like you're trash like just be humble know where you are but no being consistent will get you to a place where you want to be right practice because you could talk all this shit about how good of a fighter you are okay then let's train and practice. let's see how good you are and if you're not that good you haven't been training as much so you need to stop talking so walk the walk don't talk to talk until you fucking walk the walk long enough uh and another thing is i just hope people find like what they're good at and fall in love with it and be good at it because once you find that thing that you just want to do it's almost like a you could see yourself doing this shit forever and you could see yourself in 10 years what you're doing with this still and that's like a really cool thing because it's kind of like when i started training and i fell in love with it and i was like fuck i just thought of everything like i could do until the time i'm old so it's like, yeah. that's like, it showed me my that's life. Dope. You know what that's I mean? Dope. Like when I found it, when I found whatever it was that I loved, it literally like showed me my life. Like I took a trip into the future and just thinking about everything that I'm going to accomplish and everything I could do with it. And I'm like, well, I'm set. Like I know where I want to be. I know what I want to do. And like not a lot of people know what they want to do, or what they want to be. That's so. beautiful. You have a solid foundation. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's dope. What has been the funnest moment moment for you with this whole fighting stuff? With with with, with the actual training. the actual fights. The fights. Those are the funnest. What was? Because I remember my first fight. Because hmm. like I said, I've been watching fighting and watching WWE since I was little, and that's always been a person in the center of the stage performing, and like there's like a fucking crowd going nuts, going crazy. Signs. So, as a kid you're like what yeah the, i was like that shit's hard these people are bad fucking ass and i know yeah and i'm like the one in the crowd like thinking that i'm not the one in the crowd like thinking like oh that's what i want to do until i'm like Sh i can do that and low key that shit would be sick and i was when i was really young and then i started training blah 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 but my first fight yeah talk about that that, that, that experience of all the people cheering you on yeah that shit's crazy so it's addicting. It's almost like performing too, huh? Yeah, it's just like that. Yeah, right. It's that same it's feeling. A, it's a performance. Yeah. Yeah, at the end it's of the day, the same feeling. you're giving a performance. And when people fuck with you, mm. that's like the coolest feeling ever. It's like when you're like, when people are like, yo, that shit was dope. Yeah, yo, you fucking you went crazy. Oh, yeah, up, exactly. Like, yeah. I love that. I love, like, that. I love that We shit. love you guys. We love you so, guys. So much. It was the craziest thing when I went into the cage. And I look up, and there's fucking people up in the fucking, like, top section of this theater type thing. Fucking hella it's people. Packed out. It's packed house. And everybody's Fire. like. Fire. Everybody's like, oh, let's, like, all my people showed up. You just hear Showtime being chanted. And I'm just like, Fire. this is real. Like, I'm, I'm really in here, like, how I've been wanting to be. Like You were nervous. I you felt, were excited. Like you I've, were what? I've been in a position where every a lot of people I look up to have been in my same position. Fire. So I'm like, this is this is what they experience. Milestones. Yeah, exactly. Milestones. So this journey. Yeah, so 
That shit was I, and the, the How m- old are you? 24, 24 on Friday. Ah. Oh. Oh, happy early birthday, my Thank guy. You. Happy Appreciate early you. fucking birthday, my yes, guy. Sir. You're about to be 25. 24. You, so you're 23. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love that. Yes. So, but in that moment of me looking up at the crowd and like, and this was before the fight started because yeah. this is me walking out. So everybody's like, let's go. And fucking, I'm just like, damn, like, this is, I'm like, I'm meant to be here because this is like, I feel in my element right now. Facts. And this is before I've ever really done a, a hip hop show. Anything. Anything like that. Like, that. So like this first is my first crowd time. Control. Yeah, and I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. So you out there yelling at them, they're yelling at you back, or like were you nervous? Nah, you're I'm just, just like I'm soaking it all in. I'm like, fuck yeah, like looking at it and then I'm zoned in now. Fire. I'm like, that was all right, soak that in. Time to work. Cause it would it would be a different story if I look and I'm like, oh fuck, nervous, and then I'm like, uh, you, you gotta know? focus, you gotta but stay like, channel. Saw, you, you gotta stay channel. You gotta live up to the moment. Mm-hmm. You can't let the moment be bigger than you are. You know what I mean? Because the moment is just the time and space of something something happening, and you got to be in control of that. That is a gem. Yeah, you got to be in. You got to be in the moment. You got to own the moment. Yeah, own the fucking day, son. You know what I'm saying? Own Same shit. The day. Same shit. You can't. Fire. You can't think of tomorrow. Like we're think. We're talking about right now. That's why we're doing this Cut shit. We're in, we're in the fucking. I love that. We're in exactly. a moment right now. So exactly. you got to realize when you're in that moment that you're in a moment. So fucking fuck everything else. Control the task at hand. Nothing else matters. So the task at hand is fuck you up. You know what I mean? I'm looking at the dude across from me and I was like, All right, now it's time to fuck you up. Because I've been training that's for That's on fucking, that Mike Tyson shit. It's, it's how it is, bro. Like, I'm trying to fuck this dude up. Like, he's going like, to. If I don't fuck him up, he's going to fuck, fuck me, me up. up. <laughs> it's either you or and me, this, buddy. And, like, Joe Rogan says this shit a lot. Like, this is one of the most unforgiving sports. Combat sports is the most unforgiving. If you do not protect yourself, you, you, fuck. you could fucking die. Literally. You could literally die. Like, if shit's not good for you in the future, getting your ass beat. Literally. You know what I mean? You feel that shit when you're older. So, just in that moment, it's just crazy. One of one of my favorite moments was my second fight, and I fought at Maricopa, which, if you fucking live around here, I'm from fucking Arizona City, Eloy, Castle Grand, Pinal County. Shout out Pinal Maricopa's County. Maricopa's in Pinal County. Well, is it Maricopa County? Maricopa County. Yeah, so, but it's right, literally right next door to Pinal County. So it's like, border, border. it was really easy for a lot of my people to go to that fight. Fire. And so there it was, was packed. Uh, the fucking promoter was like, bro, you sold like 200 tickets. No one's wow, ever, no one's ever done that ever. they didn't pay you out for that? Yeah, I okay, got, good. I got commission from the tickets. Good. But they're like, no one's, and then. Fire. That shit was like, I got. I sold so much tickets. We're like, all right, you're an amateur fighter, but fuck, you're the co-main event. Maybe so they move me. Maybe in the future we can think about maybe uh, putting our own fight together. Yeah, you would have to definitely we, we do would, some things, we, paperwork, but, but blah blah we, blah, we, like a trailer. A Showtime fight though, with headline. Oh yeah. I want you to headline. Yeah, like a trailer type and we, thing. And we can get maybe like a couple fighters. Yeah. How do we? That's how we would make that? the most money. To how, be honest, it's not even about the money. But it's, it's just, not. But that's how you but, would, though. I want. I want to help you be more of a stamp in the culture. Yeah. Right here. But also fighting, it is about the money. Facts. Well, business is business. Business is business. business. Yeah, business is business. So that's de- we talk off camera. But what I'm saying is that is that something we made feasible? Some we can like. Yeah. Easily. No, what about legally? There's no like. As long as I'm contract. As long as signed. long as whoever, if I am signed to anybody, yo, as long as they're cool with it. Yo, drop a comment down below if you guys would come out to a fight club of some sort or a UFC tournament of some sort or something. You know, headlining Showtime, and we'll find another great fighter to match. You feel me? Yeah. And then maybe we just have to go to commission, go to the sports commission, athletics commission. Okay. Cause all of our, all of the fighters on the card legally got, they got to be like, have a physical blood work and an eye exam. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, they got to so do see, all the whole nine, bro. We definitely got to do our paperwork and yeah. study then. Yeah. Facts, yeah. facts. No, that's dope. That's dope. Hell yeah. Cause it just blew my mind. It's like, I think about that. I'm just like, okay, wait, no, that's very possible. How can you, how can we, very, very, very possible. You know what I'm saying? We have artists, you know, come out, perform halftime, you know, whatever in between. That's dope. Maybe yes, maybe you know yes and like? no, because like Triller kind of tried to do that, and nobody fucked with that. Yeah, yeah. When, like it, when the it, artists would come out and perform, it's a certain type of crowd, so you have to get yeah. a certain type. You gotta of get, but, sound. but he, yeah, yeah. 
You gotta, I you I think it could work with the right Triller, with the Triller right person. Probably try to do some hip hop. They try to do some. And it was really slow. Because I think it I was think like, DJ Khaled was the one that was out there. Right? There was no. Nah, it was I, uh, it was a bunch of different artists. I think they have I like three or four one, artists. I think I seen one where DJ Khaled was at one and nobody was even moving or. Oh yeah, when he was in the ring yeah, and he was like saying some shit. And they're all. And then everybody like, yeah, nah. And yeah. now everybody's it. Nah, it was crickets. And nobody, yeah. <laughs> so I get it, I get it. But but I think locally, you know, we can freak, we can make a freak. But yeah, hey, listen, is there before we wrap this up? Is there anything else you want to kind of you know talk about or you know, tap into before we say you know kind of message? Nah, bro, just you know tune into the next episode because I'm coming back in a couple of days. <laughs> 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 and we're gonna do this for a little longer because you know we'll be celebrating my birthday. So yeah, we'll do. A, yeah, that one's gonna be a fun podcast. Fire, yeah, yeah. That was gonna be fun. Fire, fire, yeah. Hell yeah. So, you guys, like I said, follow my guy, Showtime, down below in the link. Drop some comments, show some love. Like I said, drop some comments if you want to see some, you know, fight action, you know, some besides music, you know. But, yeah. Yo, this has been another episode of Spirits of the Streets podcast. I appreciate you for coming through. You feel me? Thank you. And we appreciate y'all for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Bless up. Peace.